So I thought I'd show how you can use Tonex to capture plugins and more specifically signal chains that you might have set up in your door. So we're gonna be using Reaper from this and it's important that you follow these steps when installing Reaper as we're gonna be using Rear Root and Reaper to do the uh, plugin capture. So we're gonna do this from the very beginning. So you're gonna install Reaper for say the first time or reinstall Reaper if you don't have Rear Root installed. So it's the usual, I agree here, you set the place where you're gonna install. And then this window, this is where it's really important to watch out, under optional functionality, you open this up and you make sure that rear root um, ACO driver is ticked and the rest as per usual, and then you can install it. It's installed, we can run it now, and Reaper will load as per usual, except now underneath the record tracks, we have all these extra options. Now, I guess for most interfaces, it'll probably be just a few uh, analog inputs or outputs that are listed here. As I have an ADAT connected, I have an extra eight. That's why I have so many listed here. However, all of these below are all the ones we just added via rear route. Now we have rear route and Reaper installed properly, we can now look at how to set up Tonex app to capture our plugins. So the thing I would suggest here is opening the Tonex app before Reaper, because sometimes if Reaper is already open, when you go through the modeling or capturing procedure, it will sometimes say that the uh, rear route ASIO driver is not available. So to get around that, just make sure Reaper is already closed and you open up Tonex first and then go through these procedures. We go to Modeler, hit Next, Guitar, it's a complex rig. And then over here, we're gonna select rear route ASIO X64 in my case. And so this is where, as you would for capturing a usual rig, you're gonna set up your sends and returns and your outputs. Now the thing is, because this is all sort of internal routing, you won't be able to hear anything through the Tonex app. So this is where we're gonna open Reaper. And we're gonna set up the uh, signal chain or the plugin chain that we want to record. So what we do here is we're gonna put in uh, a plugin that we're gonna use. Let's say, let's say I want to use Omega Granifier. I'll use one of my uh, own presets here. And what's very important is to turn off the gate when you're capturing plugins because the gate will basically mess with uh, the capture levels and so you won't get a decent capture, you know, it'll sound kind of weird. So make sure to turn the gate off, and we can close that. And then underneath record, or which track we're gonna to use to record into this, we're gonna select rear route three. And then within the Tonex app, we're gonna select number three. And as Tonex forces us to always have to select inputs and outputs, I would suggest for the guitar input to set it to 16. And then for monitor left and monitor right to be 10 and 11. So the numbers you choose here are relevant, but the numbers that we choose for the center rig and more specifically the return from rig are the ones that are important. And so underneath the return from rig, we're gonna select one and then two over here. And now we'll change one more thing into Reaper so that the internal routing together with Tonex is correct so that we can start our plugin capture. So under Reaper, we've already set our recording input to be rear route three, so that matches up with Tonex. But the important part now is to tell Reaper to send out the signal from uh, the plugin chain back into Tonex. And it's really easy. So you right click the fader and this menu will come up and it's basically the, the routing for the track in question. And under audio hardware outputs, you set this to rear route one, rear route two. You can then close this window. So for now, I'll just show capturing the one plugin, but the really cool thing is that you can add multiple plugins to further tweak the tone and then capture that. So stick around to a bit later in the video if you want to see uh, the results for that. So now we have our Tonex app set up correctly. So just to go over it again, we have number three as center rig, and number three is the input that's been recorded here. And then we have one and two, which is return to rig. And that's what we just set up here underneath the hardware output. And so now we can hit next. 
and we can ignore this part because there's no way of checking the input level and it doesn't really matter for the capture that we'll be doing. And then we can hit next again past this screen and then we get to this screen. And what's really cool is that we can then set play and then we can hear the uh, signal being sent out into uh, the plugin and then we can check that it's correctly coming back into the Tonex app. So I'll just note, right now we're hearing the signal going out into the plugin through Reaper. We're not hearing it through the actual app itself. So I'll play it again. So as you can see, touching the monitoring level makes absolutely no difference. But that doesn't matter as through Tonex, all we're using it for is to capture what's going on through Reaper. We then hit next. And here, if you don't want to hear all these bleeps, blops, and all that kind of stuff, I suggest you just mute the master track here and then start the capturing process. So there we go. We've finished the first part and we can hit next. And so here we can select the accuracy level of the capture that we've uh, just done. I'd suggest usually doing advanced, but in this case, I'll just hit default to show you the result of the capture of the plugin that we just did. So there we go, the training's finished. I'm gonna hit next. And then this window comes up where you can test and review between the capture tone and the source tone. As this is all with rear route and it's all internally done, I would suggest skipping through these next two steps and just making the uh, tone model. So we'll hit next, we'll hit next again, no need to do this. And you can adjust gain and things like that after the fact, so that won't be an issue. And then you can decide what skin, what name and things like that that you want for the model. So there we have the, uh, the capture that we just made within Tonex. And we can leave Tonex open here, so I'll just minimize that. And I would suggest opening up a second track within Reaper so that we can quickly AB between the source, i.e. the plugin chain that we um, just captured, and then the capture within Tonex. So the capture worked and it's within uh, Tonex now. However, as you could hear, there's still that difference between the original and what we captured here. So I needed more gain, less bass to get it closer. And I think in part is also the accuracy in the actual capture itself. So that part where you had to select the amount of training time, I think this would have really benefited from having the advanced um, accuracy in there. So that's what we're going to look at now. I'm going to build another amp chain and then capture that using the same process and we're going to see how that sounds. So the signal chain we're going to be capturing here, and as I said before, you can add all sorts of plugins and build up a signal chain with your favorite amp and then capture that using the process I just outlined within Tonex. So in this one, it's gonna be a bit of an inception moment. So we're gonna be using a NAM profile of my VHT Deliverance 60 that I captured. And then we're gonna be boosting that using the TSE 808, which is a free plugin. And then within uh, Cabinetron, we're gonna be using uh, a set of uh, Origin IRs. They're free, I'll link to that in the description below. And now adding to that, I'm gonna add a multiband compressor, which is really useful for controlling sort of like the um, lower mids when you're sort of chugging or playing heavy stuff. Because quite often there's gonna be buildup in that area, which gives this kind of boomy sound. And then by adding the plugin here, we can control that and then Tonex can then capture that. So the plugin we're gonna be using for this is TDR Nova, which is also a free plugin. I'll link to that in the description below. And here's one I set up earlier, which is a basic multiband compressor on the lower mids. So it's like the Andy Sneap trick if you want to read up more about it. But in essence, these are the settings I'm using. So a Q of around two, frequencies around 130, 
and then the threshold part, that's doing the compression. I've set this to minus 10. I've put ratio at two, two to one, but you can play around with that depending on the sort of guitar you're using and uh, the sort of sound that you want. And then the attack at 10 and the release at 25. <laughs> quite like how that sounds and then I'm going to just add a few more plugins because I make electronic music I've got a whole host of different plugins that I've used to sort of beef up the sound and give it more character so a bit like if you're running in a studio and you're running through different racks preamps and things like that to give it a different character to the tone so that's what I'll be doing here <laughs> And you can also, of course, include an EQ plugin if you want to further, say, shape high cuts and low cuts into your tone here. I'll leave this one out because this is what I'm going to capture and then put on ToneNet to give it the maximum amount of flexibility, shall we say, in terms of where you want to use it. <laughs> Now something I'm not entirely sure about, and this will depend on your PC and your audio interface, is actually the CPU that's required to process a much larger chain. So the thing was, when I came back into Reaper, I had a CPU overload on uh, True Iron, for example, and I'm not sure how much, if at all, it might have affected the capture. But that's not something I can really test as like nothing crashed and the capture came out all right. So that's maybe something to bear in mind when you're doing something like this. So I uploaded this capture up onto Tonet as well, if you feel like checking out. I'd really like to hear your feedback on this. So please leave a comment below on what you thought of the process or what you thought of the sort of tones on the captures here. That would be really great. And if you like this kind of content, please drop a like and subscribe as it really helps me out. Thanks.